Hey everyone, so I've had a few requests lately to do a brief video on how to set up room accounts for the Microsoft Teams room systems. Uh, and that's what we're gonna do today on this video. However, I am not going to reinvent the wheel. And what I mean by that is I'm not gonna go through all the procedures and, and show you how to do it. There is lots of good documentation on this and lots of good uh, overviews on how to do it. And it's a little easier to do that and then show you that and show you the resources that I use uh, so that you're well equipped to do them yourself. Uh, my favorite resource is one from a fellow Microsoft MVP, Jeff Schertz. He put together a blog post on exactly this thing in February of last year and did a great job with it. So thank you, Jeff. Uh, I've used it over and over again. And, uh, and I hope that it's going to be helpful for you guys. Instead of just giving you the link, though, I'm going to show you the post. I'm going to give you the link. And then I'm going to walk through, calling out a few of the very important areas that you need to keep in mind as you reference this blog post, okay? Let's head over to the post and check it out. Okay, here we are. This is Jeff's Creating Microsoft Teams Room Accounts. Now, I really don't want to just sit here and word for word walk you through this. I'm going to kind of step through the main sections and call out the areas that I think you need to focus on. But I would recommend that you read through this on your own time to get a very good understanding of what's happening in the background. But essentially, even at the time of him writing this back in February of 2019, this was not a new process. This was nothing that he was covering because it was just suddenly new. He probably had requests uh, for, for various people to break this down into an easy to consume blog post, and he did. So uh, I've used it, I know many other people have, and I hope you guys find it helpful as we move forward here. Uh, the things I'll call out as we start is that this example that we walk through assumes a purely online environment. That means Skype for Business Online, Microsoft Teams, and Exchange Online. All components, because there is an Exchange mailbox that is part of this. It is a resource account uh, of the type Room, so that we can schedule it as a resource in our meetings. And then there is, of course, the Enable Meeting Room component, so that we can assign Enterprise Voice capabilities and meeting capabilities to this account as well. Um, if you have an on-prem environment or an on-prem component of your environment, the methods, the, uh, the procedures will change up just a bit. And Jeff actually calls that out and has links to doing that right here in the blog post. So read through it, find those links if that's you, and proceed through it. The other thing I'll call out is that Jeff's steps assume we are creating a new account from scratch. If you actually need to use an existing account, I think it should be pretty obvious, or an existing mailbox, I should say, uh, where people are already scheduling it as a resource, right? If you wanna use that existing mailbox and turn it into a room account, it should be pretty obvious how you can modify these steps to kind of skip over the mailbox creation and then use the rest of the commandlets there to, to, to modify them a bit to where you're, you're, you're modifying and adding on to an existing mailbox rather than creating and setting one up from scratch. All right, with all those prerequisites, let's go ahead and step into what we need to do first. First things is we need to get the Microsoft Exchange Online PowerShell module opened up. So I said, moving on from prerequisites, I lied. A few more prerequisites. Uh, you need to have the Microsoft Exchange Online PowerShell module installed. You need to have the Skype Online Connector PowerShell module installed. If you don't have these prerequisites in place on your machine, you just have Windows PowerShell, then you need to install them before you can move forward with this. And once you're all installed and set up, then you can start running through the commandlets. So if that's you and you're kind of following along as you do this, pause the video, go out to Bing or Google or wherever and find those modules and get them installed. All right, let's move on. Down here, we have these series of PowerShell commandlets that are run. We are connecting to three different services. First, the Exchange service. Second, the MSOL service. And third, the Skype online service. We are not using the Teams PowerShell module because even though these devices are Teams devices, there's no part of that module that is required to make this happen. These face commandlets in the service is still the Skype for Business Online service. Uh, the Exchange portion of it is to obviously work with the mailbox. 
The MSOL service part of it is to set up a new account and get licensing pieces in place and all that good stuff. And then obviously Skype, that's where we do the enable-cs meeting room later on and set it up for enterprise voice, all that good stuff. Once you run them, you can see what the results should look like right here. We are properly set up and connected to these services and ready to start setting things up. Before we start setting it up, we need to know what licenses we have available. And it's not just like you type in E5 or E3. Uh, they do not name them quite so easily when it comes to the SKU names behind the scenes. So we use get-msol account SKU to see all the account SKUs that we can choose from here. Um, if you don't have this meeting room SKU, I would advise that you get it for these purposes. Uh, you can use regular user SKUs, like an E3 plus add-ons or an E5, but the licensing is more expensive if you go that route, and the meeting room license gives you what you need uh, without paying for extra services that the meeting room can't even leverage or use. So, your call, you can use your E5, but I recommend you go and get some meeting room uh, licenses and assign them to the meeting rooms you need to uh, create. So you'll take note of what it is, you'll copy that value, and then we will come down here and create a number of variables. First, we're gonna set up a username to sign in with, okay? Put that in this new room variable. Obviously, you can get creative with your variables, name them whatever you want, but for following along, here's what we, uh, what, what, here's the example. Uh, you create a name. This is really kind of the display name that the uh, account is going to show up with. The password. Make sure you be secure with that. The license. Here's where you're going to copy that value from above into here. We want the license to be in there. And then our location. And for us, this would be the U.S. Now, again, if you are using an existing mailbox, you are not going to do this part. You are going to maybe assign a password to it, but you're gonna you know, modify the mailbox rather than creating a new one altogether. So we're gonna assume though, for the sake of argument, that we're creating a new mailbox. We run our new mailbox commandlet, specify our variables where they make sense. We gotta make sure that we put this room switch in here because this is a resource account that is of the room type and we enable it at the end. Uh, once that is run, we should see this, this confirmation here, and we wait 30 seconds or so till we start applying settings to it. Moving on down, we get to apply some things. First up here, we're going to uh, say that the password never expires and assign the location. Now, is it best security practice to never let our passwords expire? I know where you're going with that. If you are one of those that is asking that, but think about this. This isn't a regular user account. This is an account that is signed into a device that people are scheduling for meetings. If a password expires and nobody had notice of that, and you happen to be the unlucky user who is rushing to your meeting last minute, and you go to click that join button, but can't because the password is expired and needs to be reset, that is not a good situation. So rather than having the passwords expire, it is a better practice for these room accounts for your IT organization to put a schedule in place on the back end where they regularly change passwords and then go and update the devices accordingly. Uh, moving on to the next command here, we assign licenses with the set-msol user license. And then we're gonna use the set mailbox license to add a mail tip. That way people can use the mail tip if they want to to see what that uh, account is all about. Now we come down to set calendar processing, and this is important because we're, we're creating a mailbox resource that people are going to schedule, and it's not going to be somebody sitting there manually approving. We want some automated functionality to be behind this mailbox. So one of the first things here in our set calendar processing is automate processing. We want to set to auto accept. Uh, do we want to add organizer to the subject? We have it false here. You can put that true if you want. It's kind of an odd thing in my opinion. There's a couple other things you can do in here. You can add an additional response and define what you want that to be, this big text blurb. And then these two spots right here, delete comments and delete subject. Those are set to false and you want them to stay set to false for this reason right here. As Jeff calls out, if you do not set those appropriately, the uh, meetings will display without the join button that you need to connect to the meeting. And that really kind of defeats the purpose of a quick, easy, one click to join meeting experience, right? So make sure you get that part correct. Now that we've got the mailbox side of it done, we jump over to enabling it as a meeting room for Skype and Teams. 
Before we can run our enable-cs meeting room commandlet though, it requires that we identify the registrar pool. In order to get that and know what that should be, we want to find out what it is for the rest of our users, right? So we run the get cs online user and pipe that over to the registrar pool property. And once we've seen, we can, you know, if there's too many thousands of users, we don't want to let that run for them all. But once you kind of get the idea of what the main server is that's being used there, uh, kill the kill the commandlet that you run, copy out that URL and uh, and put it you know, the server name and put it into where it goes in this commandlet, and then run it. And at that point, you've got a room account that is set up and ready to sign into your MTR. Now. If you get this error right here, management object not found for identity, do not freak out. Not a worry, that just means you glossed over this part right here that says to wait several minutes before you run this commandlet. Uh, this is important because the Exchange Online service sometimes takes a while to notify the Skype service that this account, this mailbox is created, the account is created, and you can actually run this commandlet against it. Now, it can take more than several minutes sometimes. Um, so keep running that commandlet over time and eventually it will be successful uh, once the synchronization has happened on the back end. Now moving past this, if you want this uh, account, this device more specifically, but the account to be one that is enabled for enterprise voice, there's a couple extra steps. Why would you want it to be enabled for enterprise voice? Perhaps you want people to be able to call that device directly with a DID. Perhaps you want someone to walk into that room and rather than using it as a meeting device, you want them to use the dial pad to dial a number on the PSTN and be able to reach it. In that case, you need to have the account set up for Enterprise Voice. Jeff gives us a couple other steps here that uh, you need to say Enterprise Voice enabled, and then you need to assign the proper license as well. And of course, something we don't see here, you need to assign a phone number to it if it needs a phone number. But this, uh, this makes sure that it's properly licensed for Enterprise Voice and enabled for it. And now the account can be called or do the calling from that room system. Uh, next up, Jeff gives us a little bit of extra stuff here. This is really beyond the, the spot of setting up the room account. We've covered that now. The rest of this is going in and, and actually signing in on the MTR, putting the credentials in, uh, putting some settings in place, and observing what the experience is like once you're all signed in. All good stuff. Um, and Jeff, again, a huge thank you for putting this together. It's been a huge help to me, and I know many others, and then hopefully everybody watching this video as well. And there you have it. That's uh, that's the, the, the link that I use when I'm creating accounts. Um, if you need to do this in bulk, obviously there's some scripting work to be done there. You can dig into what's on that blog post and see how you might script that out yourself. Um, and if you're you know deploying things on a wider scale, this is a one-off example, okay? And it's also a one-off example that is for online only. So keep those grains of salt in mind as you think about how you're going to apply this in practical, uh, used to your environment. Things might change a little bit there. Uh, I know I've had to kind of change things up as I'm using an existing mailbox, like I mentioned earlier, right? So keep those things in mind. Uh, again, if this was helpful, as always, please reshare the video, uh, retweet. Uh, if you found it helpful, maybe subscribe on YouTube. Thanks for watching. I hope that we'll see you all here for the next device overview and demo video.